Hi, Lisa Marie Kosas, founder of Global One Health. I've posted a video on my channel that talks about the hip joint. In it, I address the anatomical structure of the joint, a few of the major muscle groups that cross it, as well as the ranges of motion in the joint. I decided to do a video series uh, just talking about a few of the basic joints in the body, because I think the more information that people have and how these joint structures work, uh, the more mindful they can be that they're loading them correctly and really, uh, maintaining the true integrity of where the joint structure is when uh, training on your own. Uh, so I've talked about the shoulder already, um, and as I've referenced, I'm going to, uh, in the first video of each of these series, provide uh, more of the anatomy side of it, and then in subsequent videos in the series, talk about what muscles, uh, uh, what exercises you can do to strengthen the muscles that affect that joint and its motion. Uh, now, I've actually already posted quite a number of videos that talk about this, uh, so rather than um, redo and recap all of those cues in this video, uh, as that would be repetitive, I'm just going to reference those videos here, uh, but show you very quickly what I mean and then provide uh, the video uh, references that you can use to check out if you want to learn more information about these exercises. Uh, so in the hip video, I mentioned the planes of motion, uh, bow and socket joint, same as the shoulder. Uh, so it's the sagittal, frontal, and transverse planes that this joint moves in. So if you want to strengthen, uh, starting with sagittal plane, the muscles that cross this joint, I've already posted a few, uh, a couple of videos on that. So a basic uh, way of strengthening the hip flexor complex, I mentioned is the marching exercise. So if you look at video mar uh, seven, I talk about that. So if I'm going to just lie on my back, raise my leg up into chair pose, I can do one leg at a time or the double leg march. Right, marching is a very good example of how to strengthen the muscles in the hip flexor complex, the anterior portion of the hip. So videos seven and eight on my channel are the marching and glute bridge exercises, or, or talk about those exercises. And in those videos, I give the very specific breakdown, as I do in all of my videos, of how to properly execute the exercise uh, each in one individually, and I really give very detailed information about that. Uh, the second exercise in those two videos is the glute bridge. That's the classic exercise of just raising the pelvis up uh, to strengthen the glute structure. Um, glute bridges are probably one of the most commonly used exercises in a, in a nice way to warm up the glute structure before squats or, or heavily loaded exercises and such as hip thrusters. Um, and also bridging and marching are very commonly used in physical therapy settings. Uh, if you want to take an approach, uh, if there's an injury involved, um, a back injury or just back pain, back discomfort, if you're looking to do exercise to strengthen in a very modified or more remedial way, uh, if you're just starting out, that's why I posted those first because those are really great exercises that are very basic and very gentle because you're lying on the ground, uh, you eliminate the gravitational load in the spine. Uh, so I referenced that in those videos. Uh, so they're really nice ways to start out either as a warm up or just introduce those muscle groups to getting attention and getting a very, very gentle load, but how to activate them safely. Uh, so again, that's video seven and eight. Uh, eight is basically part two or continuation of the more, uh, slightly more progressed variations of those two basic exercises. Uh, and that's how you can target basic frontal plane movement uh, of the hip flexor and the glute structure. Uh, I am gonna talk about that more in another video um, where I talk about squats, deadlifts, and standing hip flexion, um, and that is going to be posted next. Uh, so in terms of doing frontal and transverse plane movement of the hip, I have already addressed that as well in video 13, which is titled the Banded Hip uh, Exercise Series. Uh, so just to show you what the exercises are for the purpose of this hip series, um, but those videos have already been posted. So uh, doing um, anatomy video series kind of came to me as an afterthought after those videos were posted because I think that would be very helpful for people to have uh, as a reference as well. Um, but I just want to incorporate this into the hip series so that you um, know what the exercises are and also know that um, a number of exercises addressing these have already been posted. So if I'm looking to strengthen my uh, frontal plane muscles, my hip abductors, any side-lying hip abduction will spot target that area. So these exercises that I'm talking about that I'm referencing um, have really are 
because they're done on the ground, they are a little bit less load and less demand on the body, and they're really geared to more spot targeting those specific muscle groups. While the core muscles are still involved in activation, uh, you're not getting a lot of load and demand on other structures of the body, predominantly just the hip structure. Uh, so I can be, um, as I mentioned, lying down or up on the elbow, but if I raise my leg up, I'm doing hip abduction. And to further develop the concept that I referenced at the end of the anatomy hip video is how we can multitask strengthening a joint structure. Perfect example is in a sideline hip series. While I can keep my legs straight in line with my body and be strengthening my hip abductors, I can still do hip abduction with my leg in front of me in hip flexion or behind me, right here center in, in the hip extension. So why is this valuable? Um, if, if you're looking to uh, strengthen and improve the integrity and the overall strength of the joint structure, doing um, exercises that involve overlapping two planes of movement is a fantastic way of doing this. So while I can keep my leg in neutral and just focus on the hip abductors, I also wanna get those hip abductor muscles strong in other ranges of motion. So if I bring my leg forward, I'm still doing hip abduction movement. So I'm still using my hip abductors as the mobilizers of the leg in hip abduction. But because my leg is in hip flexion and I'm keeping it in hip flexion while doing the abduction, I am isometrically working my hip flexor muscles as stabilizers while still getting the benefit of the abduction in the side movement. And the same thing would hold true if I'm doing the movement in hip extension, I'm now using my glute structure to isometrically support my leg in hip extension at the joint while still doing abduction as the movement. So again, this is a great way to strengthen the joint structure in multitask, right? So uh, keep that in mind uh, as a great way. Another example, of course, is the, the forward back movement. So now I'm actively using my hip flexors and my hip extensors to move my leg back and forth. But because I'm keeping my leg raised off the ground, my hip abductors are working isometrically to hold the position. Uh, so fantastic uh, suggestion for, again, as I said, multitasking to strengthen the muscle groups and get more than one, either one muscle group or more, uh, or, or getting more fibers in a specific muscle group to be engaged in that movement. So again, that is video 13, which is the banded hip series. And in it, I also talk about clams, which is of course targeting the, the third uh, position or plane that the hip joint moves in, which is the transverse plane. So just showing you here, the full breakdown again is in that video. Clams, a fantastic way to spot target external rotation of the leg at the hip joint. Um, with or without a, a TheraBand. Um, I can also do internal rotation while side lying. Uh, there, putting a band around the ankles is a great idea, but that is strengthening internal rotation. And again, these are very gentle uh, exercise uh, forms that you can do to really just kind of hone in on one specific area. Uh, but always vertical, uh, vertical exercise work, uh, vertical loading is gonna put more load and demand on the body. Uh, but just wanted this video to reference um, Quick show, quickly showing you what exercises you can do um, in each of the three planes in the more ground-based, uh, but again, videos 7 and 8 and 13 will break down uh, the specifics of all of these exercises that you have for reference.